Hi everyone, and welcome to another tech demonstration with Tech with Timothy. In today's demonstration, we are going to learn how to import CDs into iTunes using JAWS. So iTunes is one of the easiest ways to take a CD like this and turn it into a digital recording that you can play across your computer or your smartphone or any other devices that you may wish that can sign into your Apple ID. In a future video we will talk about the different means by which you can get your music across your devices but in this particular demonstration I want to show you how we take the CDs and get them digitized. So the first thing we need to do is open iTunes. And from here on out, I'm going to be doing screen share so that you can hear my JAWS instructions clearly and so that those who may be sighted who are watching this video can see what's happening on the screen. So I will try to be as descriptive as I can on anything that I'm doing that's not on the computer moving forward. So the very first thing we will need to do in order to commence the import process is of course open iTunes. And so to do that I'm going to press Windows D to bring up my desktop first. Windows D, leaving menus, folder view list view, Timothy Jones, 130, to move to wide, use the arrow keys, to edit the selected item, press F2. And I think I'm going to slow my, down my speech a little bit so that those who are not able to keep up can um, better tell what's happening. Slower. Let's see. Slower, 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 slower. There, that should be good. Timothy Jones, one of 30. Okay, that should be better. Now, there is an icon on my desktop for iTunes, so I'm just going to press the letter I. I, iTunes, 15 of 30. And there we are. I'll press Enter. Enter. To open. iTunes, iTunes, table. Okay, and iTunes opened and it brought up a table of albums. Now, in this table, you can sort the albums by any different number of ways. You can sort them by when they were last imported or purchased. You can sort them by their title, by order of artists, by genre. There's just almost an infinite number of ways that you can sort this. So that's where iTunes is nice because let's say you remember an artist for a CD but you don't remember the uh, title of the album. Well, um, having these different organization options can help you whereas if you just have CDs on a shelf there's only one organizational pattern you'll have and that's the one you established when you place them on the shelf. So with that in mind, what we're going to do now is add a new album to this library. I got a whole bunch of CDs from a uh, giveaway that they were doing at my school when I was in my last semester of graduate school. And so um, I've got to import all of these if I want to be able to listen to them. So what I'm going to do now is open up the CD case and um, I do not have a braille label on this box. Alt P. Meeting Alt P. Le so we're now going to import this album. And in order to do that, I will open up the case. And then I'm going to open up the cabinet on my computer tower here. My computer tower is enclosed inside a special compartment on this particular desk. Now, um, something else I should mention. This computer does have a built-in DVD RW drive because I had my brother install one when he built this unit for me. But a lot of computers in 2021, and I'm sure this will be even more so as we continue to move forward in the future, 
are ditching their disk drives because a lot of people are making their programs available through installers online. And um, that unfortunately is a disappointment for music lovers because at least all of us in the classical world, the classical realm are a little behind the times and we still tend to produce most of our albums on CDs. So um, if you're one of those people who does not have a disk drive, then you will need to go out and purchase one before you can commence this process. Uh, fortunately, you can get them relatively affordably at any office supply store, but um, what you'll want to look for is a portable DVD drive that a portable DVD drive that has a USB connection, and then you can just plug it right in and go. And um, in those particular cases, uh, they'll probably have a pop-up lid on them, and then you'll have to fit the disc across the laser beam and gently press down to lock in place, and then cl close the door and it'll take off. But this particular unit, since this is a tower, and the, the uh, disk drive is built in, has a motorized drawer that will come out. So I'm going to press the button now to open the drawer. And you may have heard it pop open there. It's pretty quiet. but And then I'm gently pulling the disk off of its um, fake laser beam in the case. And we'll align it carefully with the track on the drawer and press the button again to close. And once I do, something magical is going to happen. It will actually be able to pick up the information on this disk using what's called the Grace Note database in iTunes. And it's a, simply a database that stores a whole bunch of information for different albums people put in there. And um, you can even write in information yourself and I'll be showing you that later on another album but um, right now we're going to import this one so I'll press the button to shut the drawer and it's picking up speed now iTunes dialog. Would you like to import the CD Mozart Piano Concertos number 20 and 21 into your iTunes library? Yes button. To activate, press spacebar. Tom's not the best vocalizer voice for pronouncing classical names. That should be pronounced Mozart, as many of us know, not Mozart, as um, Tom says. But nevertheless, um, I do want to import this album. You have two options, yes and no, and a checkbox. If I tab to it, no button to activate, press spacebar. Alt, do not ask me again. Checkbox not checked. To check, press spacebar. Alt which plus D. will allow you, if you import discs, to not be asked to import them. If, if you stick a disc in and you just want to listen to it, which is also possible with iTunes, um, you can tell it that you do not want it to ask you if, if you'd like to import discs by ticking that box. I'm going to tab to the yes button. Yes button. To activate, press spacebar. Alt plus Y. And we shall do just that. Space. iTunes. Mozart. Piano Concertos number 20 and 21 tree view. To move through or expand items, use the arrow keys. So now what it has done is put us in a list, or a tree view as it says, of the different tracks. And so for us as blind people, this is a game changer. Because prior to iTunes, there was no way for us to know what was on a CD without having someone cited check it for us. And so we could memorize what a piece sounded like and associate that with a certain track on the disc. But that was the most we could do. But with this, now we can actually know what is on a CD without having to have someone tell us. So now my disc is spinning up. And um, I'm going to tab so we can see what we have here. Six songs, one hour, three minutes, 632.1 megabytes button. To activate, press spacebar. Play button. To activate, press spacebar. Volume left right slider, 100%. To increase or decrease, use the arrow keys. LCD section. Importing Mozart, piano concerto number 20 in D minor, K466-1, Allegro. So this is a nice place to leave your cursor while you're importing the discs because it will actually show you um, 
Importing process. Mozart, Piano Concerto Number no. 20 in D minor, K466-2, Romance. So it will actually read you the title of the track as it's being imported, so you can have an idea on when it will be done. But you can tab a little further if you like. LCD section, stop button. To activate, press spacebar. That's handy to know because it's rare, but every so often I've seen a disc get stuck in the import process, and sometimes I have to force quit it and try again. So I'm going to tab again. Time remaining, 023 10.6x. Time remaining, 022 10.5. And that Next shows button. a countdown timer. Edit. Type in text. And then we get back to the search box in iTunes. Search options. iTunes. Back button. Music button. To act. Audio disc selector button. Mozart. Piano concertos number 2021 header. Mozart. Piano concertos number 20 and 21 edit. Type in text. And something I should note about iTunes. It's a little clunky with JAWS. And so you might want to purchase some scripts for that. In a later video, I'm going to hopefully make that purchase myself and see what that's like. And then I will see the info button to activate press spacebar. Stop importing button to activate press spacebar. Once I do that, I will um, possibly make a video to show you um, what the results are on whether it makes it easier or harder to navigate. Hopefully, the scripts will make it easier to navigate. So um, we will try those out later on. But meanwhile, this is what we have. So show action menu. Mozart, piano concertos, number six songs, volume left, right, left, LCD section. Importing Mozart, piano concerto number 21 in C, K4. Importing Mozart, piano concerto number 21 in C, K467-1, Allegro Maestoso. That's the best place to put it because that way we always know how it's going. And when the CD is done importing, it will play a chime. We'll hear that famous tritone chime, as Apple calls it, when this is all done. And so that's also very helpful for us blind people. But in case we missed it, we can always check with JAWS to see what the process is. And the amount of time for a disc to import varies from one disc to another. Some Importing no Mozart, piano concerto number 21 in C, K467-2, Andante. Some go really fast, some are slow. It just it depends on the quality of the disc and um, how fast the player decides to spin the disc. So my old laptop that I used to use to import discs when I would... Um, get a few CDs here and there in college tended to um, import things really slowly. You could just about go get yourself a drink of water. Importing Mozart, Piano Concerto number 21 in C, K467-3, Allegro Vivace SI. You could just about go get yourself a drink of water and a snack while you're waiting for it to import, which is what I often did. But um, this one's moving a little slower. I've seen discs import in as little as two or three minutes when they're going super fast. So the amount of time it will take varies on the disc. iTunes. Ah, there we go. There was the tone. There was the tone. So that means we are done. And to verify, if I go back to the tree view of tracks, iTunes. Six. Import CD button. Imports show it. Mozart Piano Concertos Number no. 2021 Header Eject Button To Active Mozart Piano Concertos Number no. 20 and 21 Tree View To Move Through or Expand Items Use the Arrow Keys Now something else I should note is that at least without the JAWS scripts your Braille display is not going to render very helpful information for this process so if you're using a Braille display during this you might want to um, if you've got to um, keep your speech down because you're in a busy environment, you might want to get yourself a headset and unmute your speech because your braille display is not going to be very nice to you. Hopefully it will be different with the scripts, but at least with my braille display, when you're navigating through your list of albums, it doesn't even show you the title of the album on your braille display. JAWS will tell you, but iTunes won't show it necessarily. So let's 
arrow through these tracks and you will hear something that will let you know you'll hear a helpful sign to let you know that we are actually done with these converted one mozart piano concerto number 20 in d minor k 466 one allegro time 1526 friedrich gelda claudio abato vienna philharmonic orchestra album mozart piano concertos number 20 and 21 genre classical so you just heard a wealth of information just from that one track so um Another cool thing I can do is we can use the home button or the end button, which is um, seven or one on our numeric numpad to move quickly to the first or last track in the list. So I'm going to press the end button now. End. Converted six. Mozart. Piano concerto number 21 in C. K467-3. Allegro Vivaci SI. Time 638. Friedrich Gelda. Claudio Abato. Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. Album Mozart. Piano concertos number 20 and 21. Genre classical. So that's that. So yes, all the tracks are indeed converted because it does them in order. So if you're ever unsure if you leave the room while you're importing a disk and you come back and you're like I don't know if it's safe to eject my disk well just look in the tree view at the last track and if it says converted then you should be safe alright so there are two ways you can eject the disk you can either press the button on your disk drive to eject it like I did to insert it or we can use the hotkey control E echo on the keyboard or E for eject to eject the disk and so I'm gonna do that now control E and out she comes iTunes table and we are returned at that point back to the table of albums so I'm just gonna take this disk out and pop it back in its case and close the case back And I'll go and close my drive back as well. We don't want to leave those open. Okay. Media Alt P. Media is leaving iTunes. So that is how you import a CD if iTunes has the information for it saved in the Grace Note database. But what if it doesn't know what album you're importing? Well, that's where things get a little bit interesting. Fortunately, Apple has thought of this, and they know that it's just about impossible to have every album on the planet Earth saved in the Grace Note database, and some of the artists that produce albums may not know how to enter that information. And so they have created a way for the end user to add that information themselves. Problem is, unless we as blind people know what those tracks are supposed to be and what that album is supposed to be then that task is just about impossible without the aid of a sighted assistant or an artificial intelligence agency like IRA. So what I did is I went through this whole shelf worth of albums that I brought home from my school and I checked them all and um, found the ones that were not recognized by the Grace Note database. And of course, the only way to do that was to painstakingly stick each album in the disk drive and see what happens in iTunes. And um, I just sorted all of the unknowns into a pile and was able to use that as a means for getting these imported. So, um, what we're going to do now is actually import another album that is not stay that, that does not have any record in the database and I will show you how to write in these tracks I had my sighted brother assist me by compiling the information for this particular album in a word document so all I have to do is copy paste everything into the correct boxes so that'll make it easy library sidebar Mu so with that in mind, I'm going to grab this album here, and I don't exactly remember the title of this album, but I remember enough about it that if I see the Word file that he created, I can use that to help me put two and two together. So we're going to go ahead and stick this album into the disk drive. 
and you will see a similar message come up, but this time it will say the song names could not be found online. iTunes dialog. The song names for the CD could not be found online. Do you still want to import the songs? Yes button. To activate, press spacebar. Now, if I was to hit yes, it would just import the songs with no track names at all. And for some albums, especially if you've got some that were converted from tapes or records, that may be an ideal thing to do. Because, especially if it was produced in such a way that individual tracks were recorded on one track of the disc. In other words, they did it like one, tr one part of the disc, one track on the disc was side A and then the other track was side B. Um, that's often how um, people who make homemade conversions of records tend to do things. And so in those particular cases I might not label the tracks because that would not be the easiest thing to do. But, in this case, since each track is an individual song, we are going to label them. And so I'm going to press tab to get to the no button. No button. To activate, press space bar. Alt plus N. And we'll press space. Space. List box. iTunes. Audio CD tree view. To move through. Now you see it doesn't have any information, so it just calls it an audio CD. Very generic. So, now what we're going to do is go to a file folder that I left open called Albums by pressing and holding down Alt Tab till we get there. Task switching. Windows 9. Jaws Home Muse. Zoom. Albums. Albums. Items view multi select. There we go. Now, um, not selected. Attribute to Alfredo Barley. Available. End. Oliver Steiner in concert. Holy. Attribute to Alfredo Barley. One of three. Okay, that's the one. Attribute to Alfredo Barry. Or, or barely, however that's pronounced. It may be, may be barely, I'm not sure. But, anyway, we are going to open this Word file. Enter. Opening Word. Microsoft Word document. Attribute to Alfredo Barely. Attribute to Alfredo Barely. Attribute to Alfredo Barely. Okay. And I have a sound scheme turned on in Microsoft Word, so that's where those chimes are coming from. And um, perhaps in another video on Microsoft Word, I can show you how that's turned on. But for tonight, let's look at how this is laid out. So my brother organized this very well. He put the album name up top. Album name. Blank. A tribute to Alfredo misspelled barely. Okay, and Microsoft Word thinks we misspelled that person's last name. But I know that it was not misspelled because he copied everything straight off the paper in the CD sleeve. Blank. Extra album cover information. And he's got the extra album cover down here, which ha has the artist and genre and other stuff. Blank. Atlanta International Piano Competition. Blank. Competition finalists perform. Beethoven, Ravel, Schubert, and Rachmaninoff. Beethoven, Ravel, Schubert, and Rachmaninoff. So if you know anything about classical music, you automatically know that this is going to be a classical genre album. So, blank, May 19th, 2002. That is the date that it was produced. Of course, for me, what I will do is probably copy all this information into the notes section in iTunes, which I will show you momentarily. And I will just have to put the year in the year space provided. Atlanta, Georgia. Wow, this one was recorded right here in my hometown. That's interesting. Blank, blank. Okay, so enough of that. Now, before we go any further in this document, let's return to iTunes. Albums, to move iTunes, 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 audio CD tree view. And I'm going to show you a neat little menu of where you can go to edit this information. So, first, we are going to shift tab a few times. Audio CD header, eject button, audio CD header, show action menu. Import CD button. To activate, press spacebar. We will do that in a moment, but that's not what we want to do right now. 
CD info button, iTunes, audio CD header, CD info button. To activate, press space bar. That's what we want. CD space. info. CD info. To check, press space bar. All right. So I press space on that. I'm going to tab a few times. CD info. Artist. CD info edit. Type in text. Okay. So I tab a few times and we're on the artist box. And so what I'm going to do here is go back to the word file iTunes. To move to an item, press the arrow. Attribute to Alfredo Barely Word. Attribute to Alfredo Barely Word. Edit. Blank. Atlanta, Georgia. May 9th. Blank. And Rachmaninoff. Beethoven. Rap competition finalist perform. Blank. Atlanta International Piano Competition. Blank. Extra album cover information. Blank. Atlanta. Blank. Cop beta and blank. May. Atla blank. Blank. Total timing set. Blank. 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 Page break. Page two. Sonata in F minor. Performed by misspelled Shin My Young Row audience favorite. Level misspelled I I I I I. Allegro Manon Miss. So I'm scrolling through the document now to look at the artist information. Blank. 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 Level zero. IV Love Lost by Maurice Ravel. Performed by Iko misspelled Yajima. Third prize. Okay. So this was a competition finalist album. So it featured multiple artists. So what I'm going to do here is simply put the information that was at the top about it being student finalists. Page one, blank, blank, extra out, blank, Atlanta International Piano Competition. Blank, competition finalists perform. Beethoven, Rappel, competition fine, blank, Atlanta International Piano Competition. So that is going to be the artist information. So to do this, we're going to make sure our cursor is put at the beginning of the margin by pressing the home button, which again is seven on our numpad. Home. And it played a chime to let us know that it is already there. And now I'm going to press shift end, which is shift with the number one on the numpad. Selected, Atlanta International Piano Competition. And we'll press control C to copy. Copied selection to clipboard. Then we'll go back to iTunes. CD info. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. CD info. Button. Edit. Type in text. Pasted from clipboard. And paste it in. Now, if I read current line with insert 8 on my numpad, it will say this. CD info edit Atlanta International Piano Competition. And I know that that's in the correct box because it said so earlier when I was tapping. Now let's go to the album box and do the same thing. Album. Edit. Type in text. Attribute to Alfredo Barely Word. To move top of blank. Attribute to Alfredo misspelled Barely. There's the album name. Home. Select. Selected. A copied Home. selection. Edit. And pasted paste. from clipboard. Boom. Composer. CD info. Composer. Edit. Type in text. Genre. We're going to skip over the composer button for now because um, there are multiple composers featured on this album. So we will. Edit. Type in text. We will go to the next box. Genre. Edit. T Genre. Classical. So I'm just going to type this out. C L A S S A S L. Button. To activate, press spacebar. Gear. Gear. Edit. Type in text. And if I'm not mistaken, it said 2002. Attribute to Alfredo Barely. Attribute extra album blank. A blank. Copy to Beethoven and Rock blank. May 19th, 2002. Yep, that's right. CD info. Edit. So. Two, zero, zero, two. There we go. Disc number. CD info edit. Type in text. And this is only one disc, so we're going to type a one here. One. Of. Of. Edit. Type in text. One. So what that is about is, let's say you have an album that has multiple discs. Some of the ones that I will need to import from this collection do have two discs. And I've even got some older albums that I imported years ago that have as many as a dozen discs in them. And so that's why you have this disc box. If there's ever a time when it cannot figure out how many discs are part of the set, then you would enter what the disc number you are on in the first box, and then the total amount of discs in the set in the second box. Compilation. Album is a compilation of songs by various artists. Checkbox not checked. To check, press spacebar. This box is really more useful for popular music because um, sometimes, especially if you got like a greatest hits album of multiple pop songs and say you got one by Frank Sinatra and another by Perry Como and 
others. When you do that, if you check that box, iTunes will realize that, hey, there's multiple artists on this CD, and it will sort that album into a special folder to keep it to keep those albums separated from ones that have specific artists for all the tracks. In this case, I'm not going to check that box because though it w is several students that are playing, I prefer to keep it under the generic name that I gave it earlier. So we will leave this box alone this time. Let's keep going. Question mark button to activate press space bar. The question mark button is something I've never really been sure about in iTunes, so we're just going to skip over that for now. OK button to activate press space bar. And then we have the OK button. So I'm going to press Enter on that. Enter. CD info button. iTunes. Audio CD header. And voila. Now we have the album title, artist, genre, year, and disc number entered. And because we did it in that box, it will automatically apply that information to all of the tracks. But we still have to go label all the tracks. So I'm going to tab back to the tree view of tracks. Import C show action audio CD header eject button audio CD tree view to move one track zero one time eight fifty. And from here, I can enter the track information manually. So to do this, we're going to have to access the menu a little bit differently. I'm going to press the Applications key on the keyboard. Um, if you do not have an Application key, you'll need to use the modifier keystroke Shift plus F10 on your function row to do this. But in my case, I have an Application key, and if you do, um, it would be located just to the left of your right-hand Control key. So you should have um, a Control key, your Application key, if you have a Windows key on the right hand side, you'd have that next, and then your Alt key and your space bar. I do not have a right hand Windows key, so my application key is sandwiched between the Alt and the Control keys to the right of the space bar. So I'll press that now. Applications, context menu. To navigate, press up or down arrow. A, add to playlist submenu. D. And we'll use the arrow keys to go down through the different options here until we get to info. Play track 01, P. We don't want to play it. Play next, N. I'll explain what play next is like in a different video. Play later, Y. Create station, S. Song info, I. There we go. That's what we want. Song info. And there's a shortcut key. The key, and that is the letter I. By the way, one thing I failed to mention is you can actually press Control i as a shortcut in some cases to open that menu as well. So I'm going to press Enter here. Enter. Leaving menus. Song info. To check, press space bar. Song info. Atlanta International Piano Competition. And see, there's the artist information already pre-entered. Track 01. A tribute to Alfredo Barley. Details button. To Options button, to sorting button, to activate, press space bar. So what those are about is those, those are different options for fine-tuning the track information. I'm not going to get fancy with this album. We're just going to put in the track titles, So, because um, that's all I really care about. So I'm going to keep tabbing until we get to the box to enter this track's title. File button, to song button dropdown, to change the song info edit, track 01, type in text. And there we go. We can enter the information right here. iTunes. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. A tribute to Alfredo Barely Word. I'm going back to the Word file now, and we're going to arrow down to the first track. Atlanta. Blank. Blank. Total timing 70. Blank. 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 Page break. Page 2. Sonata in F minor. Opus 57 by Ludwig van Beethoven. Home. All righty. So I'm going to select this line selected sonata in F minor comma a period 57 by Ludwig van Beethoven and I used shift down arrow this time because I want to select the line below it too selected performed by misspelled in my young row left paren audience favorite right paren selected level one period I period allegro as I there we go and you know 
I'm actually going to have to go back because it occurred to me that there's two different places for artist information to go, and I may have put the artist in the wrong spot. Song info. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Song artist. Edit. Atlanta album. Edit. Attribute album. Edit. Type in text. Yes, I did. So I'm going to press escape. Escape. Song info. Escape. List box. I. And we're going to go back to the album info. I want to put that artist I entered earlier in the album artist edit box. And that way I can specifically enter the players by name in there in the song artist box. Audio. Audio. M C D in attribute C D info button space C C D attribute Atlanta artist C D info edit Atlanta home. Okay, so I pushed home. Now we're going to do a select all with Control A. Selected Atlanta. Copy with Control C. Copied selection to album edit composer edit type in comp edit attribute to al compose edit genre edit button year edit disc number edit one of. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Apparently, it's not going to let us see that box here. Edit, disc, edit, gear, button, edit, genre, edit, composer, edit, attribute, album, CD info, edit, artist, Atlanta International, attribute to Alfred, cancel button, attribute, Atlanta, artist, CD info, edit, Atlanta Internet, album, edit, attribute, composer, edit, type in text, genre, edit, classical, top button, gear, edit, 2002, disc, edit, of, edit, comp, album, quest, okay, cancel, cancel button, space, iTunes. Okay, it's not going to let us do that here. So, off camera, I'm going to go and move this artist information by hand on each track to its correct box. I'll be right back. Task switching, albums, meeting, windows, I attribute albums, meeting controls, alt P. Okay, so that took all of about maybe five minutes to do. But um, I'm not sure why that album artist box was not showing up on the CD info page. But nevertheless, I've got the information entered there now. So hopefully that will work better for us. So now we'll go back to what I tried to do originally, which was copy the info for the first track. Home. One. Track. So I'm going to go back to the word file. Task switching. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Attribute to Alfredo Barely. Level 0, page break. Blank. Page, page 2. Sonata in F. Page 1. Page break. Page 2. Sonata home. All right, and we'll select this with shift down arrow. Selected. Selected. Performed by Miss. Selected. Level 1 period. I period. Allegro is I. And there we go. Selected. Misspelled I. I period. Unselected. Misspelled I. I period. Okay, I just want to make sure that I select everything. We're going to do a copy here, control C. Copied selection to iTunes. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. And we'll go back to the Two, one, track zero, one. And I'll use the shortcut, control I, this time. Control I. Song in, song in, Atlanta. Tracks, attribute, details, options, but sorting, file, but song button, drop down, song info, edit, track zero, one. All right. And we're just going to do a control V to paste, and it will overwrite what's there. Pasted from clipboard. And now I'm going to have to do a little fine tuning and editing to get it everything nice and clean and pretty. Home, Sonata, in F, minor cop period, 57. So I'm using insert bright arrow to go word by word through this title. By Ludwig. Okay. By. I'm going to erase the word by. By. Selected. L, 57, Ludwig. And L Ludwig von Beethoven. Ludwig, goes selected. In the composer box. Vin, Beethoven, selected. So we'll put that where it belongs. Control X to cut. Cut selection to clipboard. Artist. Edit. Type album. Edit. A album art. Edit. Composer. Edit. Type in text. Edit. Type in text. Composer. And we're going to paste. Pasted from clipboard. Grouping. Edit. Ludwig van Beethoven 17701827. Type in text. Oh, wow. iTunes filled in its date. His dates for me. That's nice. Com al edit. Album. Edit. Type in text. Artist. Edit. Type in text. Song button drop, file button, to activate, song button, song info edit, sonata in F minor, opus 57 performed by Shin Myung Ro audience favorite I Allegro SI, type in text. Okay. Now, we've got still got some extraneous information in here, and that's the artist info, so that is going to go in the artist box. So home. we're going to go to it and select it, and then do a cut paste to move it to its rightful home. In F, minor comma, a period, 50s performed. 
Perform by Shin Myung. Selected. Row. Selected. Left paren audience. Favorite right paren. Selected. Cut selection to clip artist. Edit. Type in text. Pasted from clipboard. And fortunately, this, this content is showing on my Braille display. So I'm going to use that as a means of getting rid of extra spaces. Home. If yours is not doing that for you, or if you don't have a Braille display, you can move character by character using left and right arrows, or 4 and 6 on your numpad if your computer has one. P. End. Space. Blank. Space. Okay, I just got rid of an extra space at the end of that text box. Artist. Song info edit. Sonata in F my... I'm sure this one's got extra spaces. Home. I'm just going to read through it here. Um, space, comma, space, O. Oh. Oscar. So far, so good. End. Space, blank. There's an extra space at the end. Space. Go away. All right. That track is done. And so, um, what we're going to do now is tab to a special button that will allow us to advance to the next track. Artist. Edit. Album. Edit. Attribute to Alfredo Barley. Type in text. Just to show you that's all filled in. Album artist. Edit. Atlanta International Piano Competition. Type in text. Composer. Edit. Ludwig van Beethoven 17701827. Grouping. Edit. Type in text. We don't need to worry about grouping. Genre. Edit. Classical. Type button. Year. Edit. 2002. Track. Read only edit. 1. Use your reading keys to read of. Read only edit. 10. Disc number. Edit. 1. Of. Edit. 1. T compilation. Album is a compilation of songs by various artists. Checkbox not check. Rating. Left right slider. No stars. Two. So this is an extra box you get. If you really like a particular song, you can choose to give it a rating. So, and you can also raid an album after it's already been imported. If you're just scrolling through your music collection and you decide you know, I really like this album, I want to give it a rating. And um, not that that really matters, because stuff you import from CDs is always going to stay in your library unless you delete it. But for things that you may obtain from Apple Music, which we'll talk about in another video, you may, um, you may want to rate things that you really enjoy, so that Apple will know that, and there'll be a lesser chance of those things being removed from the catalog because um, that's how Apple Music works, is by a cataloging system. BPM. Edit. Type in text. Again, that's a box I don't really fiddle with that gets more into the nitty-gritties of um, music enthusiasts. Play count. Song info read only edit. Zero. Use your read reset button to activate comments. Edit. Type in text. And the comments field is where you can add some notes. So if you have a big box of CDs like um, a metal tin full of discs and it came with a large booklet describing a lot about the artist's bios and such or maybe they wrote some bios about the composer in there something like that then that's where you could post that information next button to activate press spacebar alright and so this is where we have previous and next buttons, and these will allow us to go quickly from one track to the next to continue editing. And this is really nice because that way you never have to leave the CD info dialog um, on one track and then reopen it on a new one. You can just bump it to the next one down the line and keep repeating the process till you're done. So I'm going to press space here. Space. OK button to activate press space bar. And we don't want to press space on that or on the cancel button because if we press enter on OK we will um, it will save what we've already done but then it'll close out this dialog so we'll have to reopen it again if we press enter on cancel we'll lose everything we just did so definitely don't want to do that and by the way it does not give you a warning asking you are you sure you want to say don't want to save your changes so be mindful of that and make sure you don't hit the cancel button because if you do you will lose everything with no warning so keep that in mind let's keep tapping cancel button Atlanta International Piano Comp tracks 02 
All right, and we're on track number two. And so from here, we have ident an identical layout of boxes, just like we did on track number one. So off camera, I'm going to fill in the rest of this information because no reason to show it, show you how to do it again. So, and when I finish, I will come back on and show you how we import this CD and because this is a commercial album, how we add the information to the GraceNote database so that the next person who gets a copy of this disc and wants to import it doesn't have to go through what we're doing now. iTunes, a tribute to Alfredo, meeting control, alt P. Leaving menus. Okay. Um, it took about uh, probably a good half hour to get all this information in, even though I was just copy pasting because I had to clean up extra spaces and fragments that were left behind on each track. But I have finished labeling all 10 tracks on this album now with the correct album information. So now it's time to import the disc and submit the information to the GraceNote database. So the first thing we're going to do is submit the disc to the database so that anyone else who has this disc in their collection that wants to import it with iTunes will not have to go through what I did. And they can just have it be as simple as that first disc I showed you on video. So we're going to shift tab a few times because I'm in the tree view now. I'll go and let you hear some of the track names. Six, Sonata in a minor, opus 143 II, Andante, time 348, performed by Robert Henry First Prize, album a tribute to Alfredo Barely, genre classical. Okay, so that gives you a sampling of what I worked on off camera. So let's go to the submit track names option and um, get this into the database for other people. So I'll shift tab a few times. Audio CD header, CD info button. Audio disc selector button. To Audio CD header. A tribute to Alfredo Barely edit. Type in text. Okay, so I'm tabbing now. I shift tab one too many times. CD info button. To activate, press space bar. Import CD button. To activate, press space bar. We'll do that in a moment, but first we want to go to... Show action menu. There we are. Show action menu. So I'm going to press enter on this. Enter. Context menu. To navigate, press up or down arrow. G. Get track names. T. And we have two options. Get track names, which obviously won't do us any good because this album's not in the, in the database. Submit CD track names. U. Get track names. Submit CD. And submit CD track names. That's what we want to do. I'm going to press enter here. Enter. Leaving menus. CD info. To check, press spacebar. And I triple checked all the album information. Everything's spelled nicely and formatted perfectly, so it's ready to go. One. CD info. Cancel button to activate a tribute to Alfredo Barely. So before submitting, they give us one final go ahead to check album information. Atlanta International Piano Competition. Artist. CD info edit. Atlanta International Piano Competition. Album. Edit. A tribute to Alfredo Barely. Type. Composer, edit, type in text, genre, edit, classical, type, button, to active, year, edit, 2002, disc number, edit, one, of, edit, one, compilation, album is a compilation of songs by various artists, checkbox not checked, to check, press spacebar, question mark, button, OK button, to activate, press spacebar. Curiosity got the best of me, I want to see what this question mark button is for. Question mark, space, blank. can't see that it really did Apple anything. link. Link Apple link store title is iTunes help. Oh, it opens up the help thing. Okay, so that's why it had a question mark. That's for help. Title is iTunes help. So we'll close that. Alt F4 question mark button. Okay button to activate press space bar. And I will press enter on okay and away she'll go. Enter stop button accessing Grassanote media database dialog getting categories stop button to activate press space bar alt plus s iTunes dialog the CD information was successfully sent to the Grassanote media database okay button to activate press space bar. And Jaws is mispronouncing that but it's actually pronounced Gracenote database. Um, Perhaps I'll do another video on how to add words to the JAWS dictionary that it's mispronouncing sometime. But for now, let's press enter on OK. Enter. iTunes. iTunes. Audio CD header. Show action. 
Audio CD header. Eject button. To activate, press. And now I'm going to shift tab to the import CD button. Audio. Import CD button. Space. Import settings dialog. Import using combo box. AAC encoder. One of five. To change the selection, use the arrow keys. Alt plus I. So here is where you can actually change the quality of things you want. So let's use the arrow keys and see what we've got. We have several different encoders to choose from. A encoder. Two of five. A -F A I F F space E N. Okay, so we have AAC, we have AI double F. Apple lossless encoder, three of five. Apple lossless encoder, that's a new one that they introduced recently. MP3 encoder, four of five. MP3 encoder. What encoder, five of five. WAV encoder. Just for fun, I think I might try the Apple lossless. MP, Apple lossless encoder, three of five. And see how I like it because um, that's supposed to be higher quality. Setting, combo box, automatic, one of one. To change the selection, use the arrow keys, Alt plus S. Now when you select the bit rate for this one, it's automatic. But if I was to go back to AAC. Import using, com home, AAC and setting, combo box, iTunes plus, two of four. To change the selection, use the arrow, high quality 128 kbps, one of four. iTunes plus, two of four. Spoken podcast, three of four. Import settings dialog, AAC encoder dialog, OK button, to activate, cancel button, use default settings button, stereo bit rate, combo box. And then another option is custom. Escape, iTunes, import, spoken podcast 3 of 4, home, high quality one, iTunes plus, 2 of... Since I know it works well, I think what I'll do is stick with the default settings. And um, I'll go and try lossless on this one. Because that'll be fun. Import using a encoder. Apple lossless encoder. Three. Setting. Combo box. Automatic. One of use error correction when reading audio CDs checkbox not checked. To check press space bar. Alt plus U. Generally I like to leave this checkbox undone because it will greatly slow down the import process if you check it. But if you have a disk that's got some spots and scratches on it and it's one of a kind and there's no way to get a better copy, then that's where you're checking that box can help you sometimes because it can help a disk that's stubborn about importing tracks to um, more likely import them correctly without any skips and um, garbled audio and all that. OK button. To activate, press spacebar. OK, I'm going to hit the OK button and uh, she'll pick up some speed and start importing. Space, iTunes iTunes, audio CD header, stop importing button, to activate, press space bar. I've never imported an album with the lossless encoder before, so this will be interesting. But um, I've always wanted to find out what the big fad is with lossless. I've heard a lot of talk about it for years. There goes my disc. I'll open up the cabinet so you can hear the motor. And so now we just sit back and wait while it imports the tracks. And hopefully this will go pretty quickly. And when it's done, we'll call it a night with this video. So, um, yeah, this it's a lot of work. I'll be honest, it's a lot of work having to add CD track information. But it's definitely worth it if you have a whole shelf unit full of CDs. When I was a boy and was getting ready to go to college, one of the things I wanted to take with me to school while living on campus was my CD collection, but I knew that obviously I couldn't do that because there wasn't enough space in the dorm and I certainly didn't want to risk anything happening to my CDs. And so I asked a technician who was teaching me computer skills at the time if there was any way that I could import them and have the program display the album information just like looking at my CDs on a shelf. And he said right away, no question, iTunes. And he showed me how to get it and helped me import my first CD right there and I immediately fell in love with it. Especially when I discovered that it could pick up track names of existing albums and I was like, yes! I'm in heaven with this because, like I explained earlier, prior to iTunes, the only way you could know what track was on an album was to have someone tell you. That's no longer the case.
And with the iPhone, it really gets nice. And so maybe I'll do a tech demonstration on the iPhone music app in another video. But um, meanwhile, I'm just waiting for this album to finish. Import CD button to activate ah, press space bar. And there we go. We're done. So I'm going to let the disc slow down a little bit because this one is spinning really fast. And I don't want it to... I don't want it to... <laughs> Um, burn plastic on the disc tray when it comes out. It should slow down, but just in case. Okay, it's it's slowing down now. Yeah, it's not supposed to eject the disc while it's spinning at full blast, but just to make sure it doesn't, I'm gonna wait till it slows down to a manageable speed. Okay, it's down to a normal speed now. We'll press. Um, I'll go ahead and press the button on the computer this time table and we'll take it out and pop it back into its case if I can find the case there it is all right and we're done and so one thing I want to do now before I sign off is show you some basics of how this process works and yes, I will be playing one of my discs to show you that, but the music on this disc should be in public domain, even though it was performed by somebody recently, because the first track on this disc is a Beethoven sonata, and he died um, well over 200 years ago. So this should be okay to do. Shift F6, library sidebar tree view to move through or expand items used. So we are on the recently added um, view of my albums now. And so the most recent album I imported is going to be on top, which is F6, table. this new one. So I'm going to press right arrow. Table, a tribute to Alfredo Barely, Atlanta International Piano Competition. A tribute to Alfredo Barely, Atlanta International Piano Competition selected. Column one, row one. Now, to play this album, I'm going to press space bar. Space. And now this album is playing. If we want to adjust the volume, we can, um, it used to be you could just press and hold control while using up and down arrows, but there are some screens in iTunes where that doesn't work with JAWS. So what I like to do is use the volume slider itself. So I'm gonna tap to that now. Today, a tribute to Al Atlanta Internet Show Action Menu, but classic open, 10 song, shuffle button. Yesterday, this week, 10 items. Previous pause button. Next button. Volume left right slider. LCD set. Volume left right slider. 100%. Okay, it's at 100%. 10.0%. Now, I don't know if that did any difference for you on the speakers, but I turned mine down to 10%, and that's made it a whole lot more manageable. If we want to fast forward tracks, we can press Control Right Arrow. So your arrow keypad functions as volume and track information. So control right arrow. 10.0%. And JAWS will sometimes chatter when you do that. So and if you want to rewind, press control left arrow. 10.0. You have to do it twice quickly if you want to go back to the other track. 40. If you want to seek through a specific track, you can press and hold. Um, you got to do a really interesting key combination for this, but Control, Windows, Alt, hold all that down while you press the um, left or right arrows. So, unfortunately, this is a command that you need a QWERTY keyboard for. So, for those of you using Braille displays, I'm afraid you can't do this. Alt, Control, Alt, Alt, Control, Win. And also, if you have keyboard echo on, it's going to talk. So now I'm going to press control period, and that stops the music. So those are the basic play controls. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this. I, once you get hooked with iTunes, I guarantee you, if you're one of those like me who started out with a boombox, you're going to be like, boy, this is so much further ahead than my boombox ever was, because this thing's got a full-blown graphic equalizer in it. You can... and 
And I mean, it's not like the one on your phone where it's just got these little preset equalizers. You can actually custom adjust the sliders just like you could on a good old fashioned stereo system in your car back in the day um, with the uh, little sliders. Except for these, you would use the arrow keys to do it. Or um, perhaps if you had a touch screen computer, you might be able to use the touch screen to move them up and down. I'm not sure on that, but I'm sure for the sighted folks, it probably displays like an old school equalizer with slider sliders that move up and down. And so, but unlike my old parents' car that had a um, equalizer with five sliders, this one's got over a dozen. And you can shuffle the songs, you can repeat tracks, you can add songs to playlists, you can. I mean, it's just, it, the list goes on and on. This is definitely the ultimate music listening experience. Now, if it just worked a little better with JAWS, but um, hopefully in a couple of months, I'll be able to get the scripts and see how much better it works with that. Meanwhile, for tonight, this is going to call it um, an end to this video. So thank you for watching, and... I hope this process will allow you to move your music library to the digital age while still preserving your treasured beloved CDs for backups. Meeting controls to move to Tech with Timothy, your home for accessible tech talk.